All right, here we go. So today, our learning target is, let's get us in present mode. We are going to explore methods for subtracting multi-digit numbers today. And the reason we are going to do that is so we can solve real-world math problems that involve subtracting. There's a lot of them, especially when we think about money. Sawyer, can I pull body? When you think about money and you have money and then you spend money and it goes away, right? We're all very giving people. We have things, we get rid of things, we have things left over. That is subtraction. You're gonna be able to solve problems using different subtraction methods today. We're gonna to discuss ways to avoid common subtraction errors. All right. Sure. All right. So we are going to start today with something called an entrance ticket. This is problem solving number one. Instead of doing this on your board, my kids in person are going to get a piece of paper. So put your lids away on your markers for now. You're still going to need them. This is the problem. Finn bought five packs of gum that had six sticks in each pack. He then gave an equal number of sticks of gum to each of his three friends. How many sticks of gum did each friend get? My remote learners, look where you're gonna find yours. Go to classwork. Today is, it's under math. I cleaned up our Google Classroom pretty good today. Should not be hard to find. It is under Wednesday, lesson 411. You will see, I put a copy of problem solving number one for Google Docs. You are going to type your answer after the problem and then make sure you turn it in. This is an entrance ticket. So that is where you will find it. If you are in person, you should have already seen it, right? It's right here. You're going to get a copy of it. Put your name on it. You're going to solve it. Write your answer. Show your work. It is going to be a grade for you. We're going to do about four or five of these in the next week. So they're simple, but they are more than one step. Use all the skills I've taught you throughout the year. Do your best work. Any questions about that? That's how we're going to start today. All right, I'm going to pass these out. Put your name at the top and then get started. When you're done, you can put it in the basket. And you guys are going to turn it in. Do not share work. I want to know what you know, not what your neighbor knows. Abby, I need you to put that away. Here, like right here. The necklace there. Put the necklace up there, please, and get a pencil in your hand, and you can get started, my dear. You're welcome, Miss Wiener. Can I put the one over here? You're not the only one in the school. Is your name on your paper? If it is not, write your name on your paper. Make sure your name is on it. You can draw a picture if you need to. 
So if you just got here, um, we are doing problem solving number one. It is in classwork for my second graders under today's assignment. It says problem solving one, it's a Google doc. You need to click on that. And then you need to make sure when you click on that, you type your answer. If you wanna do your work on paper and then put it in, you can do that as well. I have people in the waiting room. I don't see anyone. Who do I do? There we go. Got them. Yep. There you go. So my second graders, you need to do this problem solving number one. It's a Google Doc. It's on the assignment for today. And then you need to click turn in. I will show it again. I have so many of them open. It's right here under math, under Wednesday, 2.15, lesson 4.11. And it's attached, problem solving number one, the Google Doc. You are going to solve it, write your answer, and turn it in for a grade. It's an entrance ticket today instead of your exit ticket. Okay, and the, the problem is Finn bought five packs of gum that had six sticks in each pack. He then gave an equal number of sticks of gum to each of his three friends. How many sticks of gum did each friend get? I want to see your equations. I want to see your work and your answer. Don't forget to label your work, your answer. What is the, what are we talking about? Pizza? Are we talking about water bottles? What are we talking about? Make sure you have your unit labeled. Cooper, you can drink more now. Thank you. Yeah, if you did not label your answer, go back and do that. Good job, Paxton. Bless you. Okay, because you're not doing your work. Then label your answer, and it gets turned in. So no, you're not. If you still have your paper, I'm going to consider you not done because it's not turned in, right? Is your name on your paper? If your name is not on your paper, would you please put your name on your paper? Lennox, put your name on your paper. Thank you. And then you can turn it in. Show me at home how you're doing. I'm going to stop sharing. Did you get most of that done? Let's see my friends at home. Give me a thumbs up if you are good and you got that done. Charlie, I see you. Josh, good job. Katie's good. I don't see Henry. Henry, can you turn on your video for me, bud? Leo, I don't see Jensen. Hmm. Mrs. Harrison's helping. Gavin's got it. 
Leo looks like he's working hard. Henry, there you are. Henry, did you were you able to submit it to turn it in? Yeah. Can you keep your camera on for me, bud? So I can interact with you. I think we'll learn more that way. Thank you. And I'm just gonna check on Jensen. Just a minute. Maybe the way. I guess he's not here. Okay, I don't see him here. All right. All right, we're gonna move on. Here we go. So today we are looking at subtraction. That was just a warm up for you. I hope your brain is ready now. Now we're going to warm up a little more. I thought this was fun. This is called an estimistory. An estimistory. So let's see if I can get it to go. Hmm, hold on, hold on. So I was able to. I wonder if I want to just start. No. That's not what I want. Hold on, everybody. So we're gonna look at this cup. Here's your question. How many shapes, they're triangles, how many of those triangles are in the cup? You can write them on your dry erase board, write what you think. The triangle shape in the cup, do you see it? How many do you think are in that cup? You're just making a guess. Then I'm gonna give you the clues. You're not supposed to be able to see all those clues, but. You just count them and see what's on the other side. Write your guess. Okay, here's your first clue. The number is less than 70. If you wrote, A number that is higher than 70 or 70, then you want to change your estimate. The number is less than 70. So Jensen, I see you just got here. I need you to do the problem solving assignment that's on today's Google Classroom. It's under math, under Wednesday, 2.15. It's a a problem, it says problem solving number one, it's for a grade. And we're gonna do one for the next few days as an entrance ticket. So we just finished that, I know you weren't here. So if you could do that, make sure you turn it in. You can work on that right now while we're doing our estimating. Okay, here's your second clue. The answer does not include the digits one, three, or five. If you have a one, a three, or five, in your estimate, you have to change it because it does not include the digits one, three, or five. Your third clue, the answer is an odd number. If your estimate ends in a zero, a two, a four, a six, or an eight, your answer is not right. It has to be odd. Oh, here it was. Tell me when you're ready for me to reveal. Yeah, I know because it's something I haven't taught. Are you ready? On your marks. Get set. Count, oh, now they're giving us a, another clue. Count by threes from three to 51. The answer is one of those numbers. What you're supposed to reveal. The answer does not include the digit one. The answer does not include the digit four. What? It was supposed to reveal. Did we have to go down? <gasps> That's terrible. You did that. 
Look at that, Mrs. Harrison, the, the reveal. Click to see the answer. And then look what happened. It gave us a clue. All right. Let's see if we have to go down further. Well, that's frustrating. So let's hear, let's hear what you said. Let's hear what you said. Elena, what's yours? I said 37. So could it be 37 if there's not a three, if you can't have a three? No. No. Nope. Could it be 47? Yeah, I think it's 47. No, but it can't be 47. Why? No, the whole number, not the digits, the number is odd. The number 47 is odd. It could be 47, that's less than 70. It's a prime the prime number is to be, here, let me show you. So that's a whole nother lesson. It has to be divisible by only itself and one. Like you can't, See if it will help me. Prime numbers are numbers that only have two factors, like one and itself. So nothing times something would not equal 47. Only like two times 20 is not 47. Two times 25 is not 47. So 47 is a prime number. It has to um, have only have the factors of one and itself. Again, I haven't taught that, but 47 would work. Did anyone have another one they think would work? Throw it out. Throw it out. Another one. Yes, Lucas. Could it be 20? No, because it's um, that's even, not odd. Henrik. 28 is even. Remember, if it ends in a 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, it's an even number because it can be divided in half into two equal groups, 14 and 14, 10 and 10. What do you think, uh, Robert? Could it be 29? That's yeah. less than 70. The answer does not include the digits one, three, or five. It is odd and it is a prime number. Yes, it could be 29. What else could it be? Max, what do you think, Bob? 29. Sawyer, what do you think? 49. Could it be? No, because seven times seven is 49. So it's not a prime number. What do you think? 41. 41, it cannot be because it has a one. And it said the answer does not include the digit one. What do you think? Um, Evie? 27. 27? No. Nope, because three times nine is 27. It has to be a prime number, any number times one. Anybody at home have a number they think? Ben, do you have one you wanted to share? I see Henry has seven. Six, 67. 67 was Ben's. Charlie, what's yours? And then we'll go back to the screen and check it. Henry said seven. Thank you, Henry. Charlie, what do you think? 47. 47. Or 67. 47, right? Yeah, that's one that um, Elena said as well. Haley, did you have one? 22. 22? That, that's even, even Steven. All right, anybody else at home before I share? Okay, we're going to go back. Henry, I see yours. You can put it down now. Thank you. Let's go back. Let's look at Ben. 67, it's less than 70. It doesn't include the digits one, three, or five. It is odd. And let's see if it's a prime number. I can't think of anything I can multiply that equals 67 besides one and 67. So Ben, yours would work. Let's check Henry's out. Henry, seven is less than 70. Doesn't have the digits one, three, or five. It is odd and it is a prime number. So Henry's could work, Ben's could work. Charlie's could work because it's less than 70, doesn't include one, three, or five. It's odd and a prime number. So looking good. All right, Lennox is last one. Um, no, I was just going to say 
We did that already. Thank you, though. Yes, that's a good idea. All right, so stand up if you think Ben's is right. That's six. There's 67 in there. Stand up if you think it's seven. I think it might be more than seven, Henry, because I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven right on the top. Stand up if you agree with Charlie and Elena, 47. And it's not going to reveal it, but I'm going to reveal it. It is Silent Drumroll 47. Nice job. Okay. Thought that was kind of fun. Because I played with it before. All right, guys, we're just going to watch the beginning of this to get our brains thinking about subtraction. Okay, guys, I wanted to play basketball, but my neighbor is borrowing my basketball. I tried bouncing rocks, but as you can see, it just does not work. I am going to see if he is done with my basketball. Why don't you guys learn about borrowing and subtraction while I go get the ball? We're going to practice subtraction. Do you remember an important rule about subtraction? In subtraction problems like this, the order of the digits matters. Six minus two is four, but two minus six is not four. Subtraction is not like addition, so let's keep that in mind and tackle a tough problem, subtracting with multi-digit numbers. We're going to subtract 756 minus 478. Both numbers have three digits. Let's look at their place value to get a better understanding before we start subtracting. This is our place value house. This helps us see the value of each number. Lennox, not a good our idea. first number has a six in the ones place, five in the tens place, and seven in the hundreds place. Our second number has an eight in the ones place, seven in the tens place, four in the hundreds place. Notice how each place in the house only has one digit that's really important. Only one digit can fit in each room of our place value house. To subtract these numbers, we need to stack them so each place value matches directly above and below each other. See how each place value is directly above or below each other? The ones place on top is directly over the ones place directly underneath it. Same goes for the tens and hundreds. Don't now write on the back, guys. The if you want to write, you can do it on the front the and try it. Where we Go for it. The difference, which is the solution to you can try this on your dry erase boards. When we subtract, we always start with, with the ones column and then move to the left. I know that might seem a little funny since we read left to right, but in math, we subtract beginning with the place value on the right and then move to the left. Not always, though. Let's we'll find that out today. Six minus eight. Huh. We can't take away eight ones from six because I don't have enough ones to do so. This means we are going to have to borrow from the next column over. Just like my friend borrowed my basketball, we will borrow from the neighbor next to it. Remember, the five in the tens column means we have five sets of tens. We need to borrow one set of tens. Cross out the five and write four above it to show we are borrowing one set of tens. Now we need to add this one set of tens to the ones column. This means we have six, plus 10 is 16. And now we have enough to subtract. 16 minus eight is eight. So we write eight in the ones column below the line. Next, we subtract the tens column. Notice we only have four tens in the top number because we had to borrow some from before. We need to take four minus seven. Huh, we don't have enough tens in the top number to subtract or take away seven. So this is where we need to borrow again from the next column to the left. The seven means we have seven hundreds or seven sets of one hundred. We need to borrow one of those sets and move them to the right. Cross out the seven and write six to show we borrowed one and then write a one in front of the four. Now we can subtract 14 tens minus seven tens, or we often just say 14 minus seven, which is seven. Now we are ready to subtract in the hundreds column. Six minus four is two. That one was easy. We didn't even have to borrow. There are no more places to subtract. So 756 minus 478 is 278. Great job. Thumbs up Let's if you got it. Problem. Is that what you got? OK, so we're going to stop here because that's not till next year for you guys. 
All right. So here's what we're going to do. Get Keep your dry erase boards near you. We're not done with them yet. Haley, are you here? I don't see you. Get your math workbooks and your pencils. Turn to page 237. And we are going to solve this word problem. Mr. Kim had 134 jazz CDs. He sold 58 of them at his garage sale. How many jazz CDs does he have now? You're probably thinking, what's a CD? Those are music. You do know? Okay, good. I know my, my kids don't use those at all. Everything's on their phones. So in the old days, we had CD players and they're like little mini records, which you probably don't know what those are. Those are big. You do? Okay. So that's how we used to listen to music. So records are like big CDs, but we had to put them on a record player with a handle, with a needle. And But these are CDs. And there's a keyword here that's going to let us know which operation to use. Does anyone know what the keyword is in this word problem? Ooh, Lila Maris. What is it? Sold is the word we're thinking of. When you sell something, you get rid of it, right? He sold it. So go ahead and solve. Write the problem you think it's going to be in your math workbook. What subtraction could you use to answer this question? Abby, what did, would it be? What did you write? So you're writing now in your math workbook. What, is, what would it be, Abby? Can you look up there, honey? I think I underlined it for you. What would it be? What are we looking at? Um, 134. Okay, 134. Minus, uh, 58. Minus 58. I'm not going to solve it horizontally, right? You always want to rewrite it. Sorry about my board there. And it also says make a place value drawing. For this. So we're going to go and make a place value drawing. 100, 3 tenths, and 4 ones. That's pretty easy. Then it's telling me to take away the 58. Hmm, can I take 8 ones away from 4 ones, Ellie? No, how am I going to do that? How am I going to get more ones? I'm going to take this 10, turn it into 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 1. Now can I take 8 ones away? Yes. Sure, let's do it. 2, let's take those away, 4, 6, we're going to take 8 of those ones away. They're no longer there. Okay, now I have to take 5 tens away. Can I take 5 tens away? Abby, can I? Nope. What am I going to do? Um, How many tens are in a hundred, though? Microphone answer. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now can I take five tens away? Do I have enough? Do I have enough? Yeah, I can take five. I'm just going to take these five away. Now, what's my answer? How many tens and how many ones? You want to do one first or ten? Tens? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. And how many ones? One, two, three, four, five, six. So, we just used a place value drawing to find the answer. We didn't even have to make a new group, did we? No. So if we say 4 minus 8 is 6, that's because we took a 10 and made it 14. 
Two minus five you can't do. We ungroup that hundred, make ten tens, and twelve minus five is seven. So we can always make a place value drawing to help us check our work. Now it says write a numerical solution method for what you did in the drawing. That is it right there. So we're not going to do this part. Instead, we're going to talk about the video, how we said we always have to start from the right. That is one method of subtracting, and that is the method that I shared with you at the beginning of the year, and here's why. It's one of the easiest, right? Show me your place value drawing. You need to have that done. All right, so that is something that we have learned through the years, but guess what? There's other methods. The video was wrong. You don't always have to do it that way. There is an expanded form of subtraction. And it's called the expanded method. There's an ungroup first method. And there's a common US method. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. You are going to read over these. I have in person, I have the papers for you. This is what I want you to do. What do you notice about the expanded method? What do you notice about the ungroup first method? What do you notice about the common US method? So I'm gonna put them back up here and I want you to look at these. I want you to get close to your computer. I want you to read them. I want you to think about them and then be ready to share what you notice. I'm gonna pass them out to you guys. When he comes back, yeah, that's fine. You can so put the lid on your marker since we're not using it right now. Okay, you guys can get with a partner and read through these and discuss what you notice. What do you notice about these methods? What do you wonder? Share with a partner. You guys can take turns reading it to each other, but wait till you get your papers and then you can get with the buddy. You're welcome, my Thank you. 
Different ways to do the problem, but they each had the same quick and the same answer. Okay, keep your paper, head back to your spots. So, what did we notice? Ben, one thing you noticed. That um, they each have the same answer. They all, no matter which method you use, you're going to get the same answer. Excellent observation. Anybody else? I'm going to check my remote kids. What did you notice, Leo? I noticed what Ben noticed. Okay, Reese, uh, uh, that they're the same answer? Yes. Okay, Reese, what did you notice? Is that the, the same answer too? Okay, but what about the method and how they got the same answer? What did you notice about that, Reese? I noticed even though they used different methods, they still got the same answer. Okay, but what about the method? Josh, can you share something different? What did you notice about the method? I noticed about the method is that on the on group first method, they like moved it over like three times. Excellent. Anybody else here? What did you notice, Lila? So I noticed that on the common left method. Yep. Okay, so they had some that were wrong because it shows that they do things wrong if you don't follow it, right? If you don't do it the correct way. Okay, so these are very different. I liked what, um, when I was talking with Lennox, he said, um, well, he said a lot, but he said they have some similarities, but they also have differences, right? So we're going to explore these a little bit. We're going to practice some of these. Let's start with 456 minus 38. I'm going to show you how to do that 
using the expanded method. I will show you and then we will do these uh, together with new methods to see which one you like. Okay, because we've only taught you one, but now I'm going to show you some others and then I want you to think about which one you prefer. But I am going to hold on. Let me hit escape real quick. I'm going to add a slide so I can just do a blank one. That will be easier for me. And I'll write the problem on there for you guys. Okay, so the first problem we're going to do is 456 minus 38. Everybody write that. 456 minus 38. All right, so we're going to do the expanded form first. When we take 456 and I pull it apart into expanded form, what would that equal, Sawyer? Um, that would equal... How many hundreds do you see? A four. So we'd have 400. Um, Go ahead and write this on your board. 400 plus 550. Plus 50. Plus 6. Plus 6. Okay, that's what... We have to do first when we use the expanded method to subtract. Then we have to expand 38. What would that look like, Sawyer? Um, you would have to, um, 38 plus, um, 38 plus 5. Um, 5. We're pulling it apart. 30 plus 8. 30 plus 8. And notice how I lined them up. And then it says you're going to start with the 1. Right? Are there enough ones to subtract 6 minus 8? No. No. So then you have to take 10 from the 50. So I'm going to cross this out, make it 40. And then this is going to be 16. Can I do 16 minus 8? Yes. What's that equal? 8. Can I do 40 minus 30? What's 40 minus 30? 10. Can I do 400 minus nothing? Yeah. Yep. What's it equal? 400. Now if we add that up, what do we get? 418. 418. That's the expanded form. Okay, we're going to try that again, but this time we're going to do 782 minus 94. Let's expand 782. Taxton, how would I expand 782? You're going to do this on your boards. Erase because you're probably going to need more room. Plus 80. Plus 2. And then we have to expand 94. 90 plus 4. Now we subtract it, right? And you're really doing it the same way you would do it with this U.S. common method. Start in the ones, two minus four. Can we do it? No. We got to cross out the 80, make it 70. Can we do 12 minus four? What's that equal, Paxton? Eight. Can we do 70 minus 90? No. We got to cross out that 700, make it... 600. Now can we do 170 minus 90? What's that equal? 17 minus 9, then add your zero, right? What's 17 minus 9? 9 in your head. Let's count up. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. What do you get? 8 plus that 0, and then 600 minus nothing packs in, is 600. Add it all up, what do you get? 688. Is this method easier or more complex? Oh, more, complex. more complex. Stand up if you love it and you think you use it all the time. 
Oh, one person. Okay, two people. Stand up if you're like, mm, no way, Jose. That's a lot of work. A lot of extra steps. Okay, all right, have a seat. I'm going to give you one more to try on your own with the expanded method. And then I'm going to show you the other method, which is a little bit easier. All right, let's try 763 minus 238. I want you to do this one. I did I do, we do, now it's you do. So you're gonna do you do this? Pull those numbers apart. Turn them around. I love how Lennox and Josh Lewis are working so hard. Ellie's got it figured out. Wow, Cooper's on it. You gotta write kind of small when you do expanded form. So turn your board more uh, horizontal so you have more room if you need to. Madison's on it. I just want to make sure you know there are more ways of subtracting than just the U.S. common method that I've taught. How you doing, Josh? Mr. Carter, doing okay? Hold up your boards. If you're done, are you already done? Or are you still working? I just have a Okie dokie. All right, I got some kiddos finished here. Oh, let's see. I'm curious if you guys got the same answer. Don't forget to add it up. Good job, Madison. All right, Madison. You're the lucky duck. You get to help me. How would I expand this number? 700 plus 60 plus 3 200 plus 30 plus 8. Now you have to subtract, right? What is that equal? Five. And then um, 50, 50 minus 30. So 50 minus 30 is 20. This is a 7. Okay. Um, then 700 minus 200 is 5. And then when you add it all up, what do you get? 525. 525. All right. So you're getting better at it. That's called the expanded form. Now, we already know the U.S. common, common U.S. method. We're not going to spend time on that. But here's the one that contradicts the video I showed you. This one is called the ungrouped first method. So we're going to try 366 minus 67. Everybody write it on your board. This time, we are going to start with the hundreds and see if you can subtract at each place. Not expanding, we're moving on to, this one is going to be the ungroup first method. This one's kind of fun. I think you might like this better than the expanding, except for I know Madison and Bird like that one. Uh, let's see how we do on this one. This time we go to the hundreds. Do I ever say start in the hundreds place? No. No, it's always start in the ones, right? And then you're going to see if you can subtract at each place. So if there are not enough tens, so I start at the three. I can do three minus nothing. I start at the six. Can I do six minus five? Then I go to the ones. Can I do six minus seven? No. No. 
So there are not enough ones, so I have to go and ungroup, and then I do this one first. But you start in the opposite direction. Now can I subtract? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, okay. But what if we had 782 minus 94? If I start in the hundreds, can I subtract zero from seven? Can I? Yes. Yeah. But can I do eight minus nine? No. No. So I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. Now I have to look. Okay, I've got 18 minus nine. But then I look and say, but I can't do two minus four. So now I've got to make this 17 and that 12. When you ungroup from the left first, starting in the hundreds, now you have everything fixed. Now you can just go and start subtracting. I could subtract six minus, nothing is six. Let's see, we've got 17 minus nine is eight, 12 minus four is eight. You don't have to go right to left if you've ungrouped everything first. Same with this one, three, zero, nine. I can start in the hundreds place. So all you're doing when you ungroup first, you do all the ungrouping, then you can subtract from left to right. You don't have to go from right to left, but you have to make sure you look at every place value. Okay, let's try one together. Let's do um, seven, Let's do 641 minus 258. Who thinks they can help me do this method? Haley Booper. So we're going to start in the hundreds. Oh. So. Can I do 6 minus 2? Yes. Yep. So then we go over to the tens. Can I do 4 minus 5? No. No, so what do I do? You're going to cross out the 6 and make it a 5, and then make the 4 a 14. Okay, am I done? Yes. Or no. Now I have to look in the 1's one. One place. Can I do 1 minus 8? No. So You're now what do I do? Cross out the 14, make it a 13, and then Okay, everybody have that? Now I want you to subtract from the hundreds, from the left to the right. See if it works. Kind of crazy. Ooh, doing it different. Feels weird, doesn't it? Yes, Max? Left to right and right to left. Let's see if he's right. Five minus two is Three. microphone Three. answer. Thirteen minus five is eight. eight. Eleven minus eight is Three. is it a palindrome? Yeah. Nice yeah. connection, Mr. Fox. He told me to Okay, I'm gonna have you do the one in green. Are you ready? Try it yourself this time. Let's do. <laughs> Let's do 425 minus 137. Ungroup all of them first, starting in your hundreds place, then subtract starting left to right. Going backwards than what I've actually taught, taught you. See if it works, go for it. Now you try, do it on your board. This is your you do time. 425 minus 137.
Well, you're going to have it. You like my All right, nice feed bird. Walk me through it. Starting in the hundreds. Can I do four minus one? Yes. Go to the tens. Can I do two minus three? No. What do I need to do? Okay, then look in your ones. Can you do five minus seven? No. What do I got to do? Pop up this 12, make it 11. Oh, oh, nope, you got now. What do you got to do? You got to subtract from the left to the right. It's awkward. You don't really have to do that, but that's what we're going to try to do. Ready? Three minus one is? Two. Eleven minus three. Eight. 15 minus 7. Eight. It's hard. Isn't it hard to get yourself to go backwards? I know. Either way, are you going to get the same answer? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Stand up if you love the method of ungrouping first. Stand up if you love it. I don't see Josh Carter standing. I don't think he loves it. No. Oh, I got some people who love it. Wow. Okay. Stand up if you don't love it. You don't think you'll use it. Not your favorite. Thank you, and I appreciate your honesty. Stand up if you think. Can you come back to find out a good idea? Stand up if you think you're going to stick to the U.S. common method that you learned at the beginning of the year. Some of you going to just stick with that one? All right. Is it okay to have more than one tool in your toolbox? Yeah, it's pretty important, right? And you know what that does? It helps me know that you understand the place value, that you get it, that you understand how it all works. So it's good to be able to move back and forth a little bit. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to work on page 238 with partners. It is... Um, not going to be turned in, so don't take it out of your workbook. Dear math students, today I found the answer to 134 minus 58, but I don't know if I did it correctly. Please look at my work. Is my answer right? If not, please correct my work and tell me what I did wrong. Your friend, Puzzle Penguin. 134 minus 58 is 124. I can already see what he did wrong. All right, I'm gonna put you in breakout rooms. You guys can get started. And if someone asks if they can join you, please say yes. Triads are okay when somebody doesn't have a partner. We would never say no. All right, write it down. Good job. All right, you guys are going into breakout rooms. To do that, only a few minutes. Make sure to join. Uh, here you go, kiddos. There you go. <laughs> Hey guys, I did not hear what any boring night we are doing on that. Make sure you do the problems on the bottom as well. Oh, yeah, I have to be. 
to your spots. We're going to just make sure we all agree. And then we'll wrap things up today. Ready to rock. So did anybody think, did anybody, well, can you speak back? Think that presentation was correct? No. No. What did he do wrong? What do you do wrong, Natalie? He didn't take away one time or two and make it. Right. You need to borrow a pen. A pen. 
that is two to one. Two to one. All right, so 134 minus 58 would have looked more like this, correct? Is that what you got? Nice. We don't have time to do these. Did anyone get to do the four problems at the bottom? Some of you? But not many. A couple of people did. All right, guys. How are we feeling? That was our first lesson on subtraction and new methods. Sum a meter. How did we do? Just not yet. Listen. How did we do? Give me your thumb a meter for today. Looking pretty good. All right. I have specific directions for my in person people. You were given this sheet, right? I'm going to ask you to put that in your math workbook so that you can refer to it when needed. And you may collect your things. I will see you manana. My friends at home, nice job today. Don't forget your thing central, 4.11. And I will see you all, Mignana. Hi, Katie. Hi, Mrs. Robin. Hi, guys. Have a good day. Hi, guys. Hi. See you, Mignana.